Boom, what's going on everyone? This is Steve J. Larson. Welcome back to this episode here. I wanna talk about what role does the government actually play in capitalism? Now it's exciting for me to talk about this. I actually get asked this more and more frequently. While I'll just know that I am gonna share my opinion, I'm also not gonna get political here with you at all. So just know that we're gonna skip that hot water. Let's dive in. Now there are four major roles that I believe government actually plays in capitalism. And before I dive into those though, I wanna tell you about a guy who actually came up with these. His, his name was Adam Smith. Adam Smith was a brilliant genius. Um, he's been called the father of capitalism. And so I'm actually gonna bring in some of his works to answer this question in this video here. But Adam Smith, uh, you know, 1700s over in Europe. You know what's interesting is back at that time, there was a really weird thing going on with how people decided what was valuable and how to price things. Take for example this, let's say that, you know, it's 1700s, let's say I'm a shovel maker and I've got this shovel and it takes me three days to go create this shovel. And I'm like, check out this shovel. You can, you know, farm your land with this shovel. It's an awesome shovel. Now someone else comes up and walks in and says, wait, I have the same quality shovel but it only took me one day instead of three. Well, back then, because it took the other guy three days, he would charge more. Really interesting, same shovel, same quality shovel. And Adam Smith looked at that and he said, that's a really weird way to figure out value. That's how a lot of things were created back then and how prices were put together. Value, is, and this is, he's one of the first people to say this, and it was actually, brief little history lesson here, it was actually one of the things that played into European reform a little bit later, was that value is determined by the end user. Value is determined by the marketplace, not the creator. Now, what does that mean for us today? Let's go back to the question here. What role does government play in capitalism? I have a problem when government starts to play with what we all say is valuable. Just like Adam Smith saying, hey, you know what? I'm not gonna go in and just because it took me longer to make the shovel that he also made and three times, that doesn't mean I should charge more. Who determines that? The marketplace the dream customer, the end user, the buyer, right? They're the ones that say, you know what, that, I, would, I would trade this money for that, right? And that kind of free trade without government's involvement, that's the kind of capitalism I'm into. So with that said though, I wanna dive into four other ways the government is involved inside of capitalism. And honestly, these are the only four I'm cool with. <laughs> because otherwise you start to go against what we decide is valuable and the government starts to say what's valuable. I'm totally against that. Okay, let's dive into these. These are four ways that the government is involved in capitalism. All right, the first role of government in capitalism is to maintain law and order inside the country, right? Just like there is a good way to use a shovel and a bad way to use a shovel, there is a good side of greed and a bad side of greed. And sometimes us as human beings, our eyes get really big. Mine are always huge. <laughs> uh, and then also our wallets start to get really hungry. And sometimes a capitalist, a entrepreneur, a marketer will go do something that is not really in the rules of the marketing game, not really in the rules of uh, economics, right? I am totally down for, and so is Adam Smith. This is actually his first point right here. It says maintain law and order in a country. And there needs to be some framework of law for how we all play this game of economics, of buying and selling, supply and demand. And so I'm totally down for that. And, and I, I love that. The problem is that sometimes we make laws just because I think people in the Senate are just freaking bored. I mean, it's, there's so many laws and they just have the, those laws meet with those other laws and then they have baby laws and those baby laws have other baby laws and there's laws all over the laws and there's so much regulation that can come as the flip side. I love the entrepreneur game. I love our capitalist society being governed by a set of laws because there's a good and a bad side of greed, okay? But at the same time, there's also a good and a bad side of government and it gets so huge and so fat and so big that they boost taxes. They gotta pay for it somehow. And so it's hardworking people like you and I that'll pay for it. The second role of government in capitalism is to protect our national borders. I spent some time in the military, really enjoyed it. Uh, learned a lot of self lessons, which was really great. Uh, however, I run a business now. I've got employees in an office. I've got payroll and I've got expenses and we got our own big studios and we got, I can't be worried about who's invading us, right? You know what I'm saying? To some extent, it's like, all right, government, you set up the laws and then protect our borders, right? And that, um, that's, that's awesome. We actually, we absolutely need that. 
Without that, can you imagine how hard it would be for us to build something in emotional security? It's why other countries a lot of times can't with, you know, with whatever government system they're in because I'm gonna go build this up and then there's no laws to protect what I've created and oh my gosh, someone else might be coming invading me. I mean, the role of government in capitalism, very strong stance for that. One of the first times I ever learned and read this, uh, a marketing book was actually during a training. It was an army training. It was a training, okay? Nothing real was going on, but I was in the mud for about 10 days in the prone for about 10 days with my M16 and uh, just laid there <laughs> and in, in army uniforms, at least back then, they had these pen slots on the forearm. And so I'd be laying down and I would, <laughs> this was a training, right? I would sneak in finance and marketing books <laughs> and uh, look for the sergeants to not be there, lay down my M16 and like pull out my book and take little pen slots and start like marking notes, see them coming, put it back in and whoosh, because I knew what I was gonna go build once I was done, it's very hard for me to do what I'm doing now without someone, something else, laws, and frankly, the right, armed services protecting the borders. That's a massive critical function of, of the government inside of capitalism. You know what's how funny it is? Whenever I see like, we need to have uh, military funding budget cuts. Now I'm not saying, I'm not gonna get on that whole tangent and stuff, but Literally, they just turn off the lights in every building because of we felt those budget cuts, all right? Everyone threw one less grenade and didn't have toilet paper. All right, this is a real thing, all right? <laughs> because it's, a, it's the government coming right in and saying like, hey, we, we got budget cuts coming on down. We're gonna spend it on this missile rather than lighting. So we would just be in the middle of the day walking through. So I, I am very for making sure borders are protected. I'm very, I've got a lot of personal background in that one specifically. But number two, yeah, government needs to protect our borders. Hey guys, before I go to the next two roles of government and capitalism, uh, if you're liking what I'm saying, go ahead and hit like and subscribe and let me know what you're liking. And then if you actually hate what I'm doing and you think that I'm a massive selfish jerk who's only self-centered and doesn't want to actually do anything good for humanity, also let me know in the comments. That's actually totally fine. And I'm being serious because I want to know, I want broader conversation of what capitalism really is. And so I'd love to talk about that with you in the comments below. All right, here's the third way that the government is involved in capitalism, and I'm so for this one because it is about, it is about regulating money supply. All right, we can't have just Joe Schmo printing dollar bills down the street whenever he wants to willy-nilly, right? There's a few mints, it's called a mint, right? There's a few mints inside of America where I am, and, and they print and they regulate cash. And uh, they figure out, oh my gosh, there's too much money in the marketplace, and they'll buy it back out. The banks will, right? And like, hey, uh, think people are really struggling right now. Let's go sell the money back into the marketplace through the banks. And that's that's how it gets regulated. Now, there's a lot of topic in this one. There's a lot of spice in this one for sure. Um, I think we print too much money. I think the government has overstepped its bounds personally by printing too much, and because they don't stop, so it just devalues the rest of money, right? So I go out and I sell but uh, what I'm getting paid back is actually worth less today than the very same product I could have sold you yesterday. That's a problem, right? And so with every single one of these, I just want you to see that there is a pro and con. There's a, you know, there's a good and a, and, a, and a bad, there's a negative. For each side, us as private sector and them as government to overstep our bounds. We've all felt the effects of the pros and cons of both of these. Okay, so number three, the government needs to regulate cash. The fourth way the government should be involved inside of capitalism is by providing public works. And that's also what Adam Smith said as well. I totally agree with it. We need roads, we need bridges. Some of those things are not best left up to the private sector. Huge highways that connect state to state, right? Those are really hard for the private sector to uh, go create. And government's honestly a little bit better at regulating that kind of stuff and using our tax money for it. What I'm not cool with though, the government seems to be really crappy at housing, really bad at providing jobs, right? That's better left for the private sector, you and I, entrepreneurs. Business owners are way better at providing housing, way better at providing jobs. And uh, I, that clear division right there, um, that's my personal opinion, but pff, it's true, <laughs> okay? Government needs to stay out of providing certain types of jobs and housing and, and things like that and leave it up to the private sector. But they should, and I love that they do create public works. You imagine if sewage and water and electricity and all these things wasn't just a little bit regulated, your power bill could be massive, right? There's certain things that have been very, very helpful for the government to step into as far as public works. Hey, if you're trying to win a powerful debate or attract the people that you wanna hang out with or dissuade those from even walking up to you that you don't wanna hang out with, our shirts are really, really spicy. They're awesome. You can go to get your shirt at capitalismswag.com. We have a capitalist pig shirt. We have a get rich give back shirt. We have a resting pitch face shirt. That's a good one. Go get your shirt for free at capitalismswag.com.